All right, so let's you and I have a little chat. I wanna to talk to you today about resetting for the fall. My garden, as you know, has gone bonkers. We have had our fair share of rain. We've had our fair share of humidity from that rain. Point being, it's exploded with growth. It is a green monster. It's Audrey too out there. It's huge. My grapevine has decided that it is gonna grow legs and try to walk and leave my property. The thing is huge. It's sprawled out everywhere. Uh, same thing with the blackberries, the blackberry canes. They love New Jersey soil. I don't know what it is, but these thornless blackberries are just chef's kiss. They exploded after I think year two. I planted them back in 2019. And yeah, they're just, they're just nuts. They're going bonkers guys. So couldn't be happier with that, but that also means you're gonna get a video pretty soon about me building a grapevine trellis. <laughs> and, uh, and we gotta put these, tuck these blackberry canes back into the arbor or that arch that I've got with that cattle panel that I made so that we can, uh, we can train them, right? We need to train them accordingly so that it's easier to pick. So yeah, we gotta tackle that. The game plan to tackle the garden is to get in there and we're gonna weed whack the raised beds and the walkways. I just need to hack everything back and get to a base level. It's early enough in the season that with these strawberries that have produced runners and have shot out boom, boom, boom everywhere, it's early enough in the season that if I do weed whack back uh, the strawberries and some of them, you know, kind of get caught in the mix, I'm pretty sure that the foliage will have time to grow back and they'll have time to settle themselves for the winter, basically. I'm not very concerned though, again, because I have so many strawberry plants. They're practically weeds at this point. So we're just gonna get in there and we're gonna hack it all back and we are going to reclaim the raised beds. Oh my God, I love tea. There's nothing better than a cup of tea. For most gardeners, I think the fall season is a pretty awkward one, right? So at this point, you're either thriving in some areas, maybe dying in others, right? Maybe at this point, your garden looks more like a graveyard, uh, which is fine, you know, because we all have our successes and failures throughout the year. I think most gardeners tend to focus on the summer season of gardening and really only plan for up until that. And then once it's over, they're done. And hey, there is nothing wrong with that. I'm here to remind you that if you do want to consider gardening past your first frost, that is an option. And if you don't know what your first frost is, you can go ahead over to the Old Farmer's Almanac. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can find your first frost. Another option, you can just Google your zip code plus first frost. And one of the variety of websites out there, I'm sure will spit something out and tell you about what day or range to plan for. Friends, if you've made it this far in the video, it would really mean a lot to me if you could go ahead and smash that like button or consider subscribing to the channel. Things like this really help small creators like me. Thank you in advance. Let's say you don't have enough space for the fall garden because right now you are swimming in abundance. But you really want a fall garden. You're gonna have to kill your summer garden. And that can be really hard. That can be really emotional. I'm gonna have to go in and cut back the tomato plants. Uh, and I'm gonna have to cut back things that I really enjoyed harvesting off of, but the plants have really kind of petered out. So you do have to make some choices uh, when you only have a certain amount of space and that's totally fine. And I get that it is hard. It is like choosing your favorite child. How could you do that? It's, it's difficult, but I want you I want you to give it a shot if you're really into the idea of fall gardening or pick yourself up a container if you don't have enough space to just try it out. Maybe it's the flip side for you. Maybe, uh, again, your garden looks more like a graveyard than an actual garden at this point and everything's already died back. In this case, I want you to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and remind yourself, hey, nature's just done the hard work for me. <laughs> the plants and weeds are already killed. It's fine. I can just go ahead and reset. If it's just weeds that are thriving, be merciless. If you're angry at mother nature, just go ahead and flatten them with cardboard, pour moist soil on top, or dig out around the weeds and mulch heavily around the base of your plants to help prevent weeds, but give it another shot. You shall be a phoenix rising from the ashes. So in our area, the first frost typically arrives around the end of October, early November. And by that point, you wanna have your plants established. So given that it is currently early September, I really only have less than 60 days to get plants in to the ground and get them started, right? Get them, get them going. So I'm not gonna do 
anything that would require starting it inside and transplanting it out. I'm only gonna direct seed uh, at this point because of the time that we have. And the roots, what, what you really want for your plants as they overwinter, it's all about that root development. So by direct sowing, roots are able to stretch out and spread a lot farther than they would if they were started in a transplant pot anyway. So I'm not suppressing that natural root growth. I'm allowing uh, the plant to kind of determine how much room it needs all on its own. We typically can stretch our season a little bit with frost cover or uh, with some like greenhouse plastic type of cover. I've even used uh, like the plastic paint six mil drop cloths and those have lasted a season. They're not ideal because they're not UV rated, but they did work in a pinch and they were quite cheap. So that might be an option for you. So what are some things that we can start in this short period of time? I definitely have time for maybe a round of peas, either snow peas or snap peas, because those will last past the first frost. So we're gonna get peas in. We can also get in some greens. Some good choice for greens would be spinach. Spinach does well in cold weather. Obviously kale, curlier varieties of kale can handle uh, colder weather. So if you prefer a flat leaf kale, just keep that in mind, I guess. I actually really love blue curled, blue curled scotch kale. I think that's what it's called, but I like that kale. It's very, very curly and it lasts throughout the uh, winter and it's just got a great flavor to it. Um, and Julian loves it and adores it, obviously. He's my little kale monster. There are certain plants that you wanna put special consideration to, such as purple sprouting broccoli. Purple sprouting broccoli happens to be a plant that a lot of people get confused with regular broccoli. The purple kind needs an overwintering period. So the idea is that you would uh, sow your seeds now, they would overwinter, and then the plant would produce uh, shoots in the springtime. So that's how that one works. And if I wanna grow that one, I would direct sow it. I might direct sow it, but I'm trying to avoid brassicas for overwintering because I had such a bad white fly, a white fly problem. It was really, really bad this year. So I'm not gonna do any brassicas overwintering this year. So I apologize, Julian, you will not have kale. Maybe in a pot. I might do it in a pot. I can't deny my boy has kale. What four-year-old likes kale? <laughs> We have to, we have to encourage it, you know? Okay, some root crops that would be good. Radish, radish turn over very quickly around this time. On any time, really, they're just a quick growing root crop. Turnips are a good choice, especially quick turnips, like salad turnips. Uh, I am gonna try a variety of uh, like, a, like a yellow turnip. I really, really badly want to, oh, and rutabaga. So turn out to rutabaga. These are really good ones. Get those seeds into the ground now. And like I said, they can tolerate a light frost. And so you'll be fine. Some varieties of carrots are also bred for being overwintered in the ground. So look for things like that if you are trying to grow crops like that versus a quick turnaround for a spring carrot might not be ideal for overwintering. The roots might go to mush, might not store well. Uh, so it's just something to consider. Look at the varieties and, and see if those varieties are bred specifically for overwintering um, or what temperature they're good to freeze down to. For me, I think something that I also wanna to try to get in in the same vein of greens is herbs. So curly parsley, cilantro, those are the two I can think off the top of my head are cold hardy down to a certain point. So cilantro I've seen last quite a long time and curly parsley lasted throughout the entire winter into the spring for me last year. So I'm gonna see if we can grow a bunch of that and do a nice big chop uh, before uh, the first frost or just after the first frost, depending on how cold it gets, right? Garlic is another great crop to put in if you're overwintering. It's pretty low maintenance. It's a set it and forget it. Uh, it's a rotisserie chicken. You just, you just let that girl go. So, oh, and also like a little fun thing to do with garlic is to use it as a partition. So plant lines of garlic down your raised beds to sort of, you know, either around the perimeter, which can help repel certain pests or throughout, mix throughout the garden, blood, so, uh, garden bed so that you can interplant. So garlic can be a really good low maintenance crop to get started uh, this fall and then you can harvest it next summer. If you're still hanging on at this point and you're on the fence about starting a fall garden, let's talk about what to do to put your garden at rest for the season, even if you're not gonna do a fall garden. It's really important to think about how you're gonna prepare those garden beds or your soil for the next year and what you can do to protect it. So. 
Obviously, if you compost or you have any other additional organic matter, adding it on top of your raised beds or your in-ground garden or even your containers is a great way to prevent soil erosion. Soil erosion happens when we see excessive rains or snowfall throughout the winter and it will slowly wash away and erode the soil in your raised beds and in your containers everywhere, really in the ground as well. The way that we can avoid this is by packing organic material on top of the soil. So it will not stop the water from penetrating the soil, but it will stop that harshness of it beating down and spreading out all of those soil and minerals and allowing all of that to escape. So it does help keep the soil together. And it also breaks down throughout the winter and provides additional organic matter and nutrients to the soil. So not only are you preventing your soil from eroding, from escaping, so to speak, you're also feeding it. You're giving back nutrients. You're adding more life and organic matter into the soil. And this will help replenish the raised beds or your in-ground bed or your containers for next year. So it's an organic, natural way to do that. And I highly recommend it. Around here, when the leaves fall, I pile those leaves on top of the raised beds and containers. I try to mulch them very, very heavily. And that really helps maintain all of that good biology inside. Definitely recommend doing that. So if you're not gonna be fall gardening, go ahead and lay your beds to rest, lay your garden to rest. There's no harm in doing that, but I definitely suggest doing that um, so that she stays nice and healthy for next year. Here it is. Here's our last opportunity to grow something for the year. Are you in or are you out? I'm in. So let's go ahead and take advantage of this, plant some seeds, see what we can grow into the winter here. And remember, you can always extend your season with your frost cloth, with plastic cover, your options are endless. Get out there and grow something. See you next time.